This is the Celebrity Afterlife Report Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Celebrity Afterlife Report, a weekly roundup of the latest, most up-to-date gossip about all your favorite deceased celebs. I am the Celebrity Medium and I'm ready to roll. Let's do this thing. I've been telling you about Joan Rivers' new show, Street Style with Joan, on which she critiques the fashion choices of ordinary people on the street in the next world. On the earthly plane, Joan was known as one of the hardest working people in show business, and death has apparently not slowed her down one little bit. It was announced this past week that Joan would also be joining the cast of an all-star troupe of comedians who will be appearing in various venues around the afterlife. Sharing the stage with Joan will be George Carlin, Robin Williams, Mitch Hedberg, and the legendary Lenny Bruce. The plan is for the comics to rotate every show so that they take turns being the closing act. According to the press release from the producers of the show, other deceased comedians may be added as people move on to new projects and different people become available. My source tells me that names like Greg Giraldo, best known for his killer appearances on the Comedy Central Roasts, and John Caparulo have said that they would love to be part of the tour when there are openings. Oh, I thought this was a nice little touch. The name of the show is the Dead Jam Comedy Tour. On the earthly plane, Henry Ford was the founder of the Ford Motor Company, which of course exists to this day. Several biographies have been written about Ford, a brilliant businessman, who also supported the Nazis prior to World War II. In fact, he's the only American named in Hitler's book, Mein Kampf. It is well known that he idolized Thomas Edison, the legendary inventor. In fact, the Henry Ford Museum contains a vial of what is reputed to be Edison's last breath. According to my Next World sources, we now know that the friendship between the two great men may have been based on more than simple admiration. It has been rumored in afterlife circles for some time that Ford and Edison have been living together in a gay relationship. Now we have confirmation of that. Recently, Ford was approached by a reporter for the Afterlife Advocate, a gay-oriented magazine, who asked him about the persistent rumors. According to the article the magazine subsequently published, the writer expected Ford to dodge the question, but to his surprise, Henry was very forthcoming. Yes, it's true, the article quotes Ford as saying, Tom and I are a couple. When we were on Earth, we couldn't admit our attraction even to each other. Now that we're here, though, there's no reason to hide anymore, unquote. During the course of the interview, which I'm told lasted several hours and covered all aspects of his life on Earth and in the next world, Ford also renounced his previous support of the Nazis, saying... Like a lot of people at the time, I was looking for someone to blame for the problems we were having. I chose the Jews. That was a mistake. And I wish I could take it back. After speaking to Ford, the reporter sought out Edison to get his take on things. Edison declined to be interviewed for the magazine, saying only, I'll let Henry speak for both of us. We've been following the ongoing saga of Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, since his arrival in the afterlife. Now there, as on the earthly plane, Elvis has a rabid following. As I've reported in the past, Mr. Presley got so tired of being followed by fans everywhere he went that he shaved his head to alter his appearance. It was to no avail, however, as word about Elvis's new look got out and people started hounding him again. Now finally, in an attempt to give his fans something while not having to perform himself, Elvis announced that he had chosen the late comedian Andy Kaufman to tour as Elvis II. Now Andy was a lifelong fan of the King and he relished the opportunity to live out his dream of impersonating him in large venues. Now last week on the report, I raised the question of whether Tony Clifton, Andy's washed up lounge singer doppelganger, 
would be the opening act for Elvis too. I can now report that after some negotiation between Andy and the real Elvis, Tony Clifton will in fact be appearing on stage at all of the Elvis 2 tour dates. My sources say that talks almost broke down over Andy's demand that Tony Clifton's name be as large as Elvis 2's on all signage and promotional material. Elvis Prime <laughs> felt that it was all well and good to have Andy's alter ego be the opening act, but that Clifton's name should be much smaller. Andy, I'm told, said that the size of Clifton's credits was non-negotiable, and eventually the original Elvis conceded in order to get Andy to do the tour. Now lastly, before we wrap up this edition of the report, just before I recorded this podcast, word came that Paul Revere, the keyboard player and namesake of Paul Revere and the Raiders, arrived in the next world. The Raiders, a band that dressed in Revolutionary War era clothing on stage, had a number of hits in the 60s and 70s. Uh, there was a small crowd waiting to welcome Paul upon his arrival, including, of course, the ubiquitous James Brown, self-appointed greeter to the stars. After James had officially welcomed Revere to his new existence, Revere received a surprise when the original Paul Revere of Midnight Ride fame introduced himself to the musician. The older Revere said that he had been looking forward to meeting his namesake for some time, and jokingly offered himself as a replacement for any gigs the younger man couldn't make. I'm told by one eyewitness that the two hit it off immediately and that they walked off together, promising to keep in touch. Okay, that wraps up this edition of the Celebrity Afterlife Report. Please come back next week where we will have another collection of up-to-the-moment gossip about all your favorite deceased celebrities. I am the Celebrity Medium. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. To ask a question about your favorite deceased celebrity, call 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-369-3732.